When you look at a lot of existing landing systems, it's often just pre-made sequences that you have to trigger manually. And there's not really any relationship to the music it's supposed to express. Or if it is matching the music, it's just the beat or the rhythm without really looking at the deeper, more emotional aspects of music. And we saw this as a major problem and one thing we want to address with the design of Mainframe B Visual Instrument. And we did that through modulation. Because one of our main design goals is to make a system that could actually capture, interpret and express the deeper, more emotional aspects of music. Often, a lot of lighting systems lose that information. It loses it when it does the translating from music to light. So you get a very flat, lifeless and static experience. And they lack that nuance or that subtlety to really take the emotional side of music, which I believe is contained within the relationships between the pitches and the dynamics, how the velocity changes over time. That is the emotional content behind music, I believe. And so then making a system that is able to understand that, capture that, and express it in its own way. And when we added pitch, velocity, and random modulation, it really made the lights come alive. It's what made lights not just reactive anymore, but now expressive. Turns out modulation is actually very useful for keyboardists and performers on the piano because you have access to 88 pitches, and each pitch has its own possible set of values of 128 velocity values. And then with 10 possible modulators, your fingers, think about all the different combinations of what could happen. And this is what makes the lights really feel alive. And I, I, I've, for me, that's been the most interesting use case for this product, where it's what really gives that organic sort of life, like that really instrument kind of feel. And that's through modulation. It also makes mainframe pretty hands off, just like with the digital piano, where you could sort of set a certain look and feel for the lights. And you, that could be based off what the mood you're trying to express, let's say. But then within that box, within the bounds of those parameters, if you modulate, now you could actually get variety, get new patterns that form and emerge without having to touch anything else. So let's dive into the details of how modulation actually works. You can modulate based on, you can modulate based on pitch, velocity, or even just randomly. And randomly is quite interesting too, because it adds a certain freshness to the lights. And so when I play with mainframe myself, I tend to always try to modulate at least one parameter randomly, at least a little bit. So it keeps the lights pretty fresh without it being random either. These are the modulatable parameters. And you don't need to memorize this because when you are using the user interface, if the modulation LEDs are red, that means it can't be modulated. When you press mod, you can now cycle through the different modulation options and have it loop. And when you're modulating, you can now see that the value LED bar turns into a range, where the bottom of that range is the lowest value that could be taken on, and the highest of that range is the highest value that parameter could take on. If you were to turn the parameter knob, you are now changing the offset, the bottom value. And if you were to now press function and turn the knob, you are now changing the maximum range. This is where pitch range and velocity range come into now. These help you define the actual subset of the pitches and velocities that you're expecting. If you're now working with, let's say, an 88 key digital piano or a smaller MIDI controller with only maybe a few octaves, you can now squish down this range. So then when you press notes and when you send it pitches, it will still map in a linear fashion to the actual parameter values, but now it'll map it in the, a more spread out manner because it maps linearly. So if you were, let's say, working with the full range, this note, will then go to this value, and let's say a higher note will go to this value. Similarly, if you now squish it down, this note will then scale across to this value, and then this note will scale across to this value. So you're still working with the linear mapping function here. And similar idea for velocity range as well. There's a couple other sub functions I quickly want to mention. When you are modulating a parameter, if you press function and mod, it now turns green, and that is now you're working with the looped parameter. So it's good to get, let's say, per octave color scaling. If you're now in pitch or velocity range, if you press function and parameter, you see the red bar up here? That is what we call cutoff, which means now incoming pitches or velocities that are outside the designated range will just not display an LED.
Modulation has been a very core feature of mainframe and it's been really instrumental. Yeah, I like that. Instrumental for giving mainframe this sort of analog feel, this organic, playable, lifelike feel. And without it, it was just a bit too reactive. I highly suggest everyone try modulation. And we have other videos on parameters, zones and layering and presets, which are the core features of mainframe, along with a lot of other videos about everything else you could do with mainframe. So I suggest you watch those as well.